Hey guys, this is Peter and today I'm back with this video to show you guys my high school stats that got me into 5 out of the 6 UC schools that I applied to as well as some of my advice on applying to the UC system. Okay, so first off, I'm going to read off the colleges and majors that I applied to. Just keep in mind, I'm just reading this off of the um, UC application that I submitted to the UC schools and this is probably what the admission officers see. So bear with me and here we go. The first four schools that I applied to are UC San Diego, UC Santa Barbara, UC Davis, and UC Irvine. And for all of those, I applied for electrical engineering and I got accepted into all of them. For UCLA, I applied for math and applied science and I got accepted. For UC Berkeley, I applied for engineering, math, and statistics, and I got waitlisted. Mm. So those are the six colleges that I applied to, as well as the majors that I got either accepted into or waitlisted to. <laughs> so I have been an international student studying in the US for the past eight years, and I still am. So I think that gave me a little bit of an advantage applying to the UC system, but still keep in mind, international students have a much lower admission rate um, than in-state students. So yes, I am an out-of-state student and um, that's what I am considered for admission as well as for tuition. And also I am a first-generation student um, because my parents didn't really go to a four-year college. So if that makes any difference for my admission, you think? I don't know, I don't think it did. <laughs> All right, now getting into the interesting things, my academics. So my high school graded on a 4.0 scale and my unweighted was 4.0 and my cumulative weighted GPA was a 4.63. And then for my SAT, I got a 1520 as my super score. I got 720 on my reading and 800 on my math. Well, we had one young, young man who got perfect on the math section Twice. Now again, while you took it a second time, that's up to him. So ask Peter to stand up for a second. And just keep in mind, UC schools do not accept SATs or ACTs. Like there's not really a place to submit it. It's not even optional. So I kind of just wasted 300 hours studying for the SAT, but anyways, I hate SATs. Then my AP scores. So personally, I think AP score really weighs in a lot in UC admission because they don't allow you to submit SAT scores. And I think for UCs, AP scores is just a standardized way to measure um, students because different schools have different grading systems, have different teachers. So AP score is really just, I think, a standardized way to compare students for admission for UC schools. Anyways, um, on to AP scores. So I got a five on Calc BC, I got a five on Calc AB subscore. I got a five on computer science principles. I got a five on A push. I got a four on AP chemistry. I got a four on physics two. I got a four on AP lang. I got a four on AP world history. And I actually canceled three AP scores. So um, I canceled my AP physics one, which I got a three on. I canceled my AP Spanish language, which I got a three on. And I canceled my AP Calc AB, which I got a four on. College admission officers definitely did not see my AP scores for those three um, tests. So I canceled them because I didn't think that threes are good enough for UCLA or UC Berkeley. When I canceled them, I was originally worried that the admission officers would see that I have taken those classes in school because it's on my transcript. But then again, I don't have a score for them. And they would be like, why didn't this student take the AP test. But apparently, based on my admission results, I don't think canceling AP test scores mattered. And right now, I don't even think not canceling your bad AP scores mattered because they will still see that you have that strong academic um, ability to succeed. But then again, I don't know. I don't know. College admissions are weird. Next, for my international viewers out there who are non-native English speakers, I got a 114 on my TOEFL English test. I got a 27 in listening, 30 on reading, 28 in writing, and 29 in speaking. So that is a total score of 114 out of 120. 
All right, now on to the actual classes. So I'm just gonna read off the UC application. I think this is what the mission officers see. So here we go. For my ninth grade, I took Ancient Civilization, Expository Composition, Fundamentals of Literature, Pre-Calc Honors, AP Physics 1, Spanish 2, Art Media 1 and 2, Early Hebrew History. So for the summer of ninth grade, so the summer between ninth and 10th grade, I took um, Chemistry Honors, and then for 10th grade, I took French 1 online. Then for 10th grade, during the school year, I took AP World History, American Literature, AP Calc AB, AP Chemistry, AP Physics 2, and Spanish 3. Then for the summer of 10th grade, so the summer between 10th and 11th, I took Critical Thinking and Composition. And for 11th grade, I took French 2 online. And for 11th grade, during the school year, I took A Push, um, AP English Lang, AP Calc BC, AP Computer Science Principles, Biology Honors, and AP Spanish Lang and Culture. Then for my 12th grade, I took AP Gov, AP English Literature, AP Statistics, um, Anatomy and Physiology, AP Biology, and Spacecraft Engineering Honors. So those are all the classes that I took in high school, and I got A's on all of them. <laughs> Alright. Now moving on to the extracurriculars and awards. So in Common App, you are allowed to fill up to 10 extracurriculars and five awards, but in UC applications, they allow you 20 spots to fill in whatever you want. So it can range from extracurriculars to awards, to volunteering, to your jobs. So whatever you have, there are 20 spots to fill them out on the UC application, and they don't have a strict limit on how many in each category that you need to fill out. So in a sense, there are a lot more freedom in applying for the UC application than applying for the Common application. All right, the first that I have on the list is the Create Award for the Vex Robotics 2022 World Championship. So this is a robotics award on an international level where our robotics team had to qualify by winning regional awards as well as the Design Award at the Southern California State Championship. Our team spent hundreds of hours building robots, testing and analyzing them, and then competing in local competitions. Next on the list, I have author of Motion Control and Planning of a 2D Flying Machine. This is a paper that I published based on my summer independent research on incorporating differential equations and kinematics into PID, which is used to model a drone control algorithm on my computer. Third on the list is Vex Robotics Online Challenge, finalist and second place. Our robotics team deconstructed electronic devices each year to compete in a special challenge from Vex Robotics Organization sponsored by Texas Instrument. For my 10th grade, we deconstructed the Cisco 2620 modular access router, produced a 95-page paper, and was a finalist. For my 11th grade, we deconstructed the Data's Precision 6100 waveform analyzer, produced a 44-page paper, and was second place for this World Championship challenge. The fourth on the list I had runners-up for the New York Times 2021 Summer Reading Contest. For the summer of 2021, I read an article on the New York Times called How Thousands of Indigenous Children Vanished in Canada, and I created a response on my personal interpretation. Then I was ranked runners-up out of the 528 entries submitted. So fifth on the list, I have first place for the Vex Robotics World Championship CAD Video Challenge. This is where I self-learned CAD on Autodesk Fusion 360 during COVID and created a promotional video for the software by presenting our team's 3D process of building a robot. Next, I have Academic Department Award. So basically, I received the Science Department Award in 10th grade and the Spanish Department Award in 11th grade, and I kind of combined those two under one slot. And then seventh on the list, I have the Most Outstanding Student of the Year Award from my school that I received in 11th grade. And then next on the list, I have lead designer, documenter, and researcher of the Vex Robotics team. This club, I participated 9th to 11th grade. In total, I participated in 17 competitions and won 13 awards over my four years at Vex Robotics in high school. And I learned CAD modeling, building robots, and documenting the engineering design process. All right, the next I have organizer and chapter founder of TEDx Youth at GBHS. So this is a rather unique project that I did in high school. So first I had to apply for an official event license from TED. Then I had to curate speakers and put together a team. And I had to um, build a TEDx sign for the event. 
and there's a lot of um, just logistics going into this event and yeah overall I think this is a very unique project that I did in high school. Then 10th on the list I have community at large representative at the Simi Valley Youth Council. So this is where I got to organize a lot of the remote events that our city had during the COVID year alongside other council members. So like we had a lot of events um, remotely like bingo nights, um, waping awareness events and then we also had a couple virtual escape rooms so like events like that helps us to bring the community together and especially the teenage groups and then next I have prosecution pretrial attorney for the mock trial club and I think all of you guys know what this is so I don't have to do much explaining then 12th on the list I have varsity lacrosse demid so I played as a demid backup for my varsity lacrosse team of my high school from 11th to 12th grade Next, I have ASB, which is basically our school's leadership club. So originally, I was the international representative for our class, and in 12th grade, I was elected the ASB secretary for the school. I helped to organize the Chinese New Year party, the Christmas party, the Thanksgiving parties put up by the international club, and I also helped out with some homecoming decorations as well as the decoration of the campus for the Spirit Week. And then number 14 on the list, I have president and co-founder of the Model United Nations Club. So this is a club that I started in 10th grade during COVID, but then it kind of died. So that's kind of why I started TEDx in 11th grade. Then the next two are college summer programs. The 15th on the list, I have Brown Pre-College Program 2021. So this is a class that I did virtually at Brown during my 10th grade summer, where I learned big data visualization as well as parallel computing. So next I have UC Santa Cruz Science Internship Program. This is a research program that I did during my 11th grade summer where I worked alongside two students and one professor on exploring the digital privacies in smart electrical power grids locally here in California. All right, the last four on my list are all volunteerings. 17th, I have math tutor volunteer. So for some Mondays and Wednesdays where I have time, I would go into math classes at my school to help tutor students on math ranging from algebra to geometry to uh, statistics to calculus and to many other um, areas of math. Next, I have robotics mentor for local Ventura County schools. So basically having gained enough knowledge in robotics, I begin to pass on that knowledge to other students in the local county who do not have access to STEM or other robotics um, resources. The first school that I helped is Valley View Middle School in my ninth grade year, where my teammates and I, as well as with my mentor, we started two brand new VEX robotics teams um, because that school had no robotics or STEM resources. And most recently, we helped out four all-girl robotics teams at Arena Middle and High School. Then throughout the years, we also did presentations at elementary schools. Overall, I think this is probably the, like the most meaningful and impactful thing that I have done in high school because like I can see with my own eyes the positive impacts that I had in other people's lives, like how their lives are changing because of STEM and how they're um, begin to discover their passion for STEM and for robotics. Okay, we are almost done, I promise. 19th on the list, I have Community Emergency Response Team, aka CERT. And I think this is a rather unique experience that I had in high school and just give me a second and let me explain. So basically, for our town of 120,000 residents, there are only 24 firefighters on shift. So in case of a disaster like earthquakes, tsunamis, well, there probably won't be tsunamis in California. But anyways, um, in case of earthquakes or wildfires or mudslides in California, emergency responders can easily get overwhelmed. And that is when us CERT people come into place and help people with injuries because we are trained with basic medical knowledge as well as disaster response knowledge. And personally, I think this is way more valuable and important than merely an activity that you can put on your college application. Because by becoming a CERT member, you actually get to really help people in need and could potentially save someone's life during local emergencies and disasters. Uh, you get to help your friends, your family, your neighbors, and really just anyone who are in need throughout your life. All right, last on the list, I have One Window Family Jewelry Store. So my aunt started a smart jewelry store and she needed people to translate her products and product manuals from Chinese to English and I volunteered to do that. All right guys, that's it for this video. Um, but before we go, I just wanna say that I have committed to UCLA. I mean, throughout the video, you can see me wearing this UCLA jacket, but 
But anyways, um, I will be going to UCLA in the fall. And if you have any questions regarding the college applications or the UC system specifically, please leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And that's it for this video. Bye.